Hello, Professor Kelly here, and I'll be covering for you the Central Limit Theorem, an important theorem in statistics. What I'm showing you right now is a positively skewed distribution. And let's say that we're interested in learning about this distribution, but like most things in life, we don't actually have this population distribution directly in front of us. All that we can learn about this distribution is what we get from a sample. So let's say we sample. Let's say we sample 25 people at random. Well, our sample will be somewhat like the positively skewed distribution that is the parent distribution. It won't be perfectly positively skewed because it's, it's a sample. It's, a, it's an estimate. And from that sample, we could calculate a, a mean, a sample mean, and we could record it here. And that would be our first sample record for this distribution of means. If we were to do that over and over again, we know that each time we would sample 25 people, we would expect that distribution of sample to be somewhat positively uh, skewed. But the real question is, what will the distribution of sample means look like? If every single time we record the sample mean, and then we get this uh, developing histogram for the distribution of sample means, what will that look like? That's where this uh, sampling distribution applet is helpful. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so to remind you, we have a positively skewed distribution. We are going to go ahead and work with samples of size 25. Could have picked smaller samples, but the central limit theorem says the larger our sample size, the more that our distribution of sample means will be normal. Okay, so here's what that sample looks like. And you can see uh, that it is somewhat, not beautifully, not even somewhat beautifully, but it's somewhat positively skewed. And that's the way it is with samples. They, they don't convey 100% perfectly what the population distribution is like. It just gives us an idea. Okay, also notice that from each one of these samples, though, we calculated a mean of the sample and recorded it. Now, let's say I did this Oh, 10,000 times. I collected 10,000 samples and recorded the sample mean 10,000 times for every uh, sample I got. Do you notice the difference between the distribution of sample means and the distribution of individual scores? The distribution of sample means looks somewhat normally distributed. And note, this was accomplished with the sample size of 25. If our sample size was bigger than 25, let's say it was 50 or 100, uh, it would look even more beautifully normally distributed. And if our sample size was 1,000, why, it would be a perfect, theoretically normal distribution, just right. How can you get that from a parent population that's positively skewed? Well, each sample mean that we get from this parent population will give us an idea of what the true mean is for the population. Sometimes with the mean being uh, an unbiased estimator, sometimes it'll be a little bit above, sometimes it'll be a little bit below, but over time, if your sample size is large enough, let's say clearly for a thousand, that distribution sample means will be this beautiful normal distribution. All right, hope you found that helpful.